Hi guys, so today's video is going to be a bit different. I'm going to talk about the basics of information security. And what you're going to see here, I'm going to use it in a scenario of, you know, a ransomware attack. So it will be used after and I hope that this will be interesting for you to learn about, you know, threats, vulnerabilities, uh, threat actors, risks, how you can uh, treat the risk etc. So I will talk maybe in, in around 10 slides about information security, security controls, risks, threats, threat actors, vulnerabilities, threat vectors, goals of attacks and risk treatment. So what is information security? It's all about protecting your information by mitigate, mitigating risks using security controls in order to maintain data confidentiality, integrity, availability. So this is the triad, the triad CIA. Now you need, so you need to protect your data so that only authorized users can access it, uh, can access them. And this is confidentiality. Integrity means that you need to maintain the accuracy of the data that you are going to work on. The data shouldn't be um, modified by unauthorized users and when you work on the data, it has to be the data that you are supposed to work on. And for availability, well, the data must be available when the users need to access it. Now, for this, you, you've got some security controls in uh, three formats. So those are here to reduce, to reduce the risk levels. So you've got physical controls like locks, doors, fire alarms, safes, etc. You've got some technical control like antivirus, intrusion prevention systems, firewall, web application firewalls, backups, snapshots, etc. And you've got administrative controls like security policies, user security awareness trainings, best practices that you know you can taught the users. So don't open uh, mail from which you know you don't know the sender. Don't click on any kind of links. Don't go to suspicious websites, etc. Now, what is a risk? A risk, it is the probability that a threat actor exploits a vulnerability in order to compromise the confidentiality, integrity, or availability of your information system or a specific asset, you know, like your data on the NAS, which will have, of course, consequences in your business, so you have an impact. Example of risks, you have, you've got loss of, of confidentiality, data disclosure, loss of data, hardware theft, hardware failures, network attacks, and malware infections. Now, okay, you've got to, uh, to do some things, you know, before you can understand all what can happen. So you have to identify your assets and your asset value. Okay, so I've got an ass with data. Well, the, this is my asset. And what is the, the value of my data? Well, that depends. Um, you need to identify your threats, your threat actors, the threat vectors, and the, and some risk scenarios. So this, you know, it's a lot of imagination to find all this information. And a risk has a likelihood, okay? It depends on your value as a target for an attacker. And so you've got a high value, you know, you can have a low high value because you're a residential customer, you know, with just pictures. And you can have a, a, a high value if you are a pharmaceutical company, for example. And it also depends on the ease of exploit to access you, to compromise your data, uh, your system, or to bypass uh, the security controls. There is no E, uh, but at bypass. <laughs> so well, if you have, for example, a low hack value, but also a low, and uh, it's very easy to exploit, well, Maybe the hacker is going to hack you for fun, you know, just because he's curious, for example, maybe also ask for a ransom, for example. But if, if you have a low value, but a lot of security controls in place, which will make the work hard for the attacker, well, maybe he will not hack you, for example, he will just, you know, leave you alone. But on the opposite, if you have a high value, but you have low uh, security controls, so it's very easy to attack you. Well, now he might attack you because it is easy and you have a value. Okay, so it's always a mix between all of that. 
And of course, when you talk about risk, you talk about impact. So you have qualitative risk analysis and a quantitative risk analysis. Uh, qualitative risk analysis is more that, you know, you are going to say that from your own experience, so it's subjective, you know that, for example, by experience that uh, with this kind of data, you might not have a big impact and you might have also a low probability of being exploited. So, well, you know, the risk is low, for example. So it's very um, subjective. But when we talk about quantitative analysis, now we're going to talk about single loss expectancy. You know, so if an incident occurs, how much is going to cost me? Annual rate of occurrence, so how many times a year it can happen, and um, the product of both is, you know, the annual loss expectancy. So if the SLE is uh, 1,000 and the um, RO is uh, like 10 times a year, it's going to cost you $10,000 $10, in a year, for example. And the impact, you know, it's loss of clients, for example, loss of productivity, of revenues, of time and money, and of trust and image and this um, last one is also very important in today's you know um, IT ecosystem if you lose your image well nobody will trust you and you might have problem so you need to define also your risk appetite okay so this is a risk level you are prepared to accept before action is deemed necessary to reduce risk so if you have a very big risk appetite, it means that you don't care about risk and you're just going to accept them. If you are paranoid like me, every kind of risk that you can find or think of, you're going to try to reduce them, to mitigate them. And also you need to calculate the risk level, which is the factor of the likelihood and the impact. Okay, So if the likelihood is high and the impact is high, well, the risk level is high. And you need to prioritize the risks, of course. Now, information, no, no, threat, sorry. <laughs> no, for the threat, it is a potential cause of an incident or danger that will exploit a vulnerability to breach security and harm your information system. So this is a cause of an incident. An example of threats, you've got espionage, if dropping, privilege abuse, unauthorized access or modification, network intrusion, data corruption, data exfiltration and data theft, and data interception, as an example. Now for the threat actors, so you've got different kind of threat actors. You've got humans, you've got non-humans, like, you know, um, like, you know, um, natural disasters, uh, technological uh, threats, you know, like uh, DOS attacks, like network intrusion, etc., etc. And for the human part, you have like you no know, script kiddies. So the the basic um, hacker, you know, which only use pre-configured tools to attack you. You've got hackers, cyber terrorists, hacktivists. You know, they believe in a cause and they will do anything to bring you down. You've got state-sponsored slash government's attackers and you have of course unhappy employee which sometimes we forget about them but it's very important now what is a vulnerability it is a weakness that an attacker or threat can exploit in order to compromise your information system and an example you've got bugs in software wrong privileges weak passwords and bad settings in the application or security system you know maybe you have uh, you didn't put the correct firewall rules uh, not the correct antivirus, you know, with the correct settings, for example. Uh, and you have applications, you know, like maybe can protect you from some attacks. Like on Synologies, you have uh, a settings to protect yourself against clickjacking. Okay, so why not use it? And you can have no or weak security systems, like, you know, a bad antivirus, um, a bad web application firewall, for example, etc. Uh, for threat vectors, so these are the routes or paths that a malicious attacks may take to compromise your system. So you've got infected USB storage devices, you know, like if someone just drops a uh, infected USB key in front of your doorstep or in the hall and you say, oh my God, a good a storage, a free storage device. Let's plug it in. And well, this is where the problem starts. And you've got infected websites when you download stuff from the website of just by you know, browsing the website with drive by downloads, for example. You've got phishing links with, um, you know, that may um, redirect you to 
to to compromised websites you've got mail attachments you've got exploits in web applications so if you have sql injection xss attacks etc etc and we all have a hack value this is very into to understand very important to understand that for an attacker we all have a value it can be low it can be medium it can be high but the very the important thing is that are we worth being attacked okay so this is uh, you know if it's easy to attack you and um, if you have anything of value in your information system but we are all targets anyway and we are targets of evol evaluation so a toe it's a system of resource that is being evaluated for vulnerability so as soon as you plug your nas over the internet it can be reached over the internet you are going to be evaluated with you know network scanning port scanning with uh, service enumerations find maybe what kind of services you have and which are uh, you know which are exploitable for example and you know and to see if um, what can they do with all this information they gather um, about you so the goals of an attack is for to damage you know just for fun some have you know the opportunities uh, it's a opportunistic opportunistic attacks so you know just because they find through their automated network scanning they find that you have a system a synology system for example or they see that for example you have the default password you have uh, um, uh, a system that is not up to date okay i have the opportunity i just don't care if you have a value or not i'm going to to try to attack you because you already have you know some characteristics of an easy exploit of course to for hacking training of course <laughs> and you have the uh, ransom on black or back blackmail scenario either by stealing so, some confidential and embarrassing data or uh, for you know crypto lockers like the synology crypto lockers that you know we had a couple of years back or five years ago or both of them at the same time in this you are really unlucky and you have data stealing to sell or use you no know, to sell personal infos or confidential personal infos business secrets etc you, you can also destruct a company with bankruptcy bad reputation embarrassment of the company and lawsuits from clients for example and you've got the supply chain attacks and for that we've got the latest example i have in mind with uh, cc cleaner where you know they attacked CC Cleaner, or they modified the code of CC Cleaner, and because a lot of uh, you know users are using CC Cleaner, it will be uh, the update will be automatically installed, and they have a foothold on other system, you know, just because of them. So uh, this is an example of a supply chain attacks. Now, for the risk treatment, so you've got a risk what i need to do about it you can accept the risk so you know i just don't care i accept the risk in my field i see that a lot unfortunately you can also avoid the risk so that means that if you know that what what you're going to do is going to bring a risk you say okay no i don't want this risk i will not do uh, what i want to do you can transfer the risk which means you know that maybe you will uh, have a uh, you know a contract with an insurance company that will cover the risk if anything bad um, happens you can also mitigate the risk you know by implementing security controls this we're going to see in the other videos for you know how to protect your synology from ransomware we're going to implement technical security controls that will not be physical or um, administrative security controls and we have the last uh, few words we have got the inherent risk so this is a risk that you have without taking any security measures so for example you have a brand new nas and you decided to you know to put it on the internet just like that and this just putting it on the internet is going to bring a risk to your system now what is it current risk okay so you've got the inherent risk you're going to start applying some security controls okay and then you will have the current risk so the current risk is the risk of today 
with current security controls, but the risk is a risk is still present anyway. You know, there is no such thing as zero um, risk. So, uh, for example, let's say um, you are going to implement a strong password password policy and two-factor authentication. Okay, so you are going from the inherent risk to the current risk now. And the risk is to protect yourself against, you know, brute force attacks. So you are going to address that by using two-factor authentication, for example, and a strong password policy. But are you really, really covering completely the risk of a brute force attack? Well, no. So you're going to do all over the risk analysis and you are going to see that, yes, I'm still vulnerable to a brute force attack and what I can do actually is to apply additional security controls like for example if you fail the logging more than three times you are going to permanently ban the IP and lock the user which you can do with uh, Synology of course and this is only theoretically you know you, you didn't implement this yet and this is the residual, residual risk. So this is the risk after some other security controls are being uh, implemented or are going to be implemented. And at the end, the residual risk has to be to an acceptable level. Okay, so it has to be uh, below your uh, also your risk appetite. And what is the ROC? This is the return on security investment. This is the initial cost of risk. Um, minus the cost of treatment and the cost of the residual risk and it has to be uh, you know uh, beyond uh, zero well, you know I, don't, I forgot the term but if for example uh, your risk is going to cost you um, let's say 10,000 this is the initial cost of risk it is 10,000 now if the cost of treatment let's say it's 2,000 but the cost of the of the um, the residual risk is eight so is um, maybe eight or nine thousand for example well just don't implement the security control because you are not going to to have a, a positive return on security investment okay so this is the idea around it if it's too expensive to implement for example but you still have a high cost of residual risk well that's really not worth it to go into that well, that's all what I wanted to talk to you about on this video. So as I said, the next one, um, it will take some time maybe to create it. It's going to be, um, you know, implementing this uh, in a ransomware scenario, how you can prevent it, how you can protect yourself. And uh, there'll be also some other notion I'm going to talk to you about. And we will be a little bit more technical and have a link to um, how you say uh, have a link you know to the security features of the nas if they ever if, if they do exist otherwise i will show you how you can do that so i hope you enjoyed the video and it has been informative this is only you know the tip of the as uh, of the iceberg for information security and risk management and risk analysis of course it's just to you know to bring you some awareness on the subject and why all this should be considered when you have an information system. I hope you enjoyed. Bye-bye.